Let's investigate the properties of the Hadamard gate. In previous videos in the quantum mechanics playlist, I talked about the Pauli matrices. We saw how the Pauli X gate can be thought of as a bit flip, and the Pauli Z gate can be thought of as a phase flip. And if we apply a bit flip and a phase flip, we get the action that is the same as the Pauli Y operator. So we can express the Pauli Y operator as the product of X and Z. And if we swap the order, we have to introduce a minus sign. There is also a global phase factor out the front, and it's plus or minus I. So this imaginary unit I is a global phase factor, so it's not physically significant. Only relative phases between states are physically significant. And if we multiply all of these guys by a factor of i, we get this expression, which we will use later in the video. It shows us that swapping the order of this product introduces a minus sign. So this is what happens when you multiply Pauli x and Pauli z. What happens when you take the sum? If you take the sum of these two operators, you get the Hadamard gate. This is the Hadamard gate in its matrix representation in the Pauli Z eigenbasis. And this is the Hadamard gate written in terms of the Pauli matrices. We have Pauli X and Pauli Z. They're being added together and there is a normalization coefficient. And this coefficient over here uh, allows us to have a more simple relationships later. It gets rid of annoying factors that would appear in the front of expressions. Another very important property of the Hadamard gate is that it is Hermitian. And you can see just by inspecting this matrix and by looking at this definition that it is Hermitian. Both of these Pauli matrices are Hermitian. So if we take the Hermitian adjoint of the sum of two Hermitian operators, we will get a Hermitian operator. So it does not affect it. Taking the Hermitian adjoint does not cha change this combination. This matrix over here is symmetric and it is real valued. So the complex conjugate of any of the elements is not going to make a difference and taking the transpose is also not going to make a difference. So these are some of the fundamental properties of the Hadamard gate. Now the next thing I want to do is have a look at what happens if we sandwich the Pauli matrices in between two Hadamard gates. We had a look at this in the previous video. We saw that the Hadamard gate allows us to translate between the eigenbasis of the Pauli Z matrix and the eigenbasis of the Pauli X matrix. So it translates the language of phase flips to the language of bit flips. So bit flips and phase flips have this kind of deep relationship in quantum mechanics. So let's write down a set of very interesting relationships. First, let's write down the identity operator, the Pauli X operator, the Pauli Y operator, and the Pauli Z operator. If we take the Hermitian adjoint of all of these operators, as we said before, we get back the same thing. And that is by definition, uh, the idea of being a Hermitian operator. So this is the same as uh, not doing anything at all. So all these guys are equal to their Hermitian adjoint. Now, the next thing I want to do to all four of these operators is sandwich them between the Hadamard gate. So two copies of the Hadamard gate. So let's put the identity operator between the Hadamard gate. Then we'll put the Pauli X operator between the Hadamard gate and then Pauli Y. And finally, Pauli Z. And we're going to see what happens to all of these cases. So first, the identity is just going to turn into the identity. And we'll see why in a second. And in the previous video, we saw what happens to Pali X and to Pali Z. They actually get swapped. So this is going to produce Pali Z, and this is going to produce Pali X. And we also saw that the Pali Y operator is the product of Pali X and Pali Z. So if the sandwiching between Hadamards has the effect of swapping X and Z, then we're going to have to swap these guys around. And that's going to introduce a minus sign. And we will see that this is equal to minus Y. So this is what happens 
to the identity and the Pauli matrices. Why am I showing this in this form over here? Well, it's because these four operators form an orthonormal basis. You can think of these guys as basis vectors. Any two-dimensional matrix can, can be represented as a linear combination of these four basis vectors. So we're used to seeing vectors as column vectors, but matrices can also be thought of as vectors because they satisfy all of the axioms of a vector space. And in fact, they also satisfy the additional axioms of an inner product space. It's just the inner product is defined in a slightly different way. We have to take the product of matrices and then take the trace. And there's also some normalization coefficients that we will see in later videos in the quantum mechanics playlist. Now, one more th property that I want to write down is actually what happens when we square these operators. So if we take the identity and we square it, that's the same as if we take x squared, and it's the same as y squared, and it's the same as z squared. And this is all equal to the identity. So we have the property that all of these guys are Hermitian and their squares are equal to the identity. This one is obvious because if we apply the identity once, it's the same as doing nothing. And if we apply it twice, it's also the same as doing nothing. But these guys are a little less obvious. So if you square uh, the matrices that correspond to poly X, poly Y, and poly Z, then you will get the identity. The next thing we're going to look at is what happens if you square the Hadamard gate. So let's do that over here. What is h squared? Well, h squared we can also write as h, h dagger, or h dagger, h. And because this gate is Hermitian, uh, the, uh, this is exactly the same as just multiplying by two factors of the Hadamard. So what does this actually mean if we act on a state? It means we're applying the Hadamard gate twice. And applying the Hadamard gate twice actually undoes the original action. So it's the same as the identity. And we're going to see that this is equivalent to the identity operator. It satisfies the same property that all of these Pauli matrices also satisfy. But let's write it out explicitly. So if we square this definition over here, this 1 over square root of 2 is going to turn into a half. And then we're going to have x plus z squared. And what are we going to get from this? Well, we're going to get several terms. We're going to have 1 half, we're going to have x squared, then we're going to have z squared, and then we'll have the two mixed terms, which are xz and zx. So oh, I'll close this bracket then. And what is this going to give us? This is going to give us the identity. And why is it going to give us the identity? Well, it's because these guys, when combined together, the sum of these guys is going to evaluate to zero. Why is that the case? Well, that comes from this property. If you swap the order, you introduce a minus sign. What about these guys over here? Well, from this property, we see that this is the identity, and this is also the identity. So then we have two copies of the identity on the inside, and that factor of two cancels with this one half. So that gives us the identity. So that is the identity operator. So we see that the Hadamard gate satisfies exactly the same property as the Pauli matrices. Next up, we also want to look at another interesting property. Why is it the case that when we sandwich this uh, Y operator between two Hadamards, why does that give us a minus sign? So we'll do that underneath over here. So if we take the sandwich of Y between the two Hadamards, that's going to give us uh, we can actually rewrite this in terms of the x and the z. So I'll write it in this definition over here. I'll factor out that i, and that's going to give us h followed by xz. So we have x, then z, and then h. What I can do is insert the identity in between this x and z. And the identity is exactly the same as the Hadamard squared. So I can insert two copies of the Hadamard in between these guys. That's going to give me i h, x, h, h, and then we're going to have z, h. And we can put some brackets around here to make it easier to see. And what do we actually have? Well, we have this combination, which evaluates to z, and we have this combination, which evaluates to x. So that's going to give us i, z, x. But i, z, x 
That's the opposite sign to what we have over here. This is minus y. So then we get minus y over here. And we could have also done it in an alternative way. Instead of putting xz over here, we could have tried the opposite order. That would have given us minus i h z x h, which is equivalent to minus i times the combination h z h, and then we have h x h. And this evaluates to x, this evaluates to z. So then we have minus i x z. But minus i x z is the opposite sign to what we have here. So again, we come to the conclusion that it is minus y. So that is what we found. Now, what I want to do is take a linear combination of all of these Pauli matrices and sandwich that between the two Hadamard gates. So let's do that underneath. We'll do that in the bottom here. So if we take the combination h, and then we have some coefficients alpha 0 i plus alpha 1 x plus alpha 2 y plus alpha 3 z and then we finish with this h what is this going to evaluate to well we can distribute these h's that's going to give us alpha 0 h i h alpha 1 h x h plus alpha 2 h y h and finally alpha 3 h z h and now we can use these properties and we can find out what this actually gives us this identity is going to remain unchanged so we'll just have alpha 0 times the identity this term over here is going to turn into a z so i'll focus on this term this is going to give us an x so we're going to have alpha 3 times x then this is going to give us a minus alpha 2 times y and then this term is going to give us alpha 1 times z. So what has happened to this general linear combination? We have swapped the x and z components and we have introduced a minus sign onto this y component. That is the effect of sandwiching between the Hadamards. So we have translated the language of phase flips into the language of bit flips. And as a consequence, we have introduced a minus sign over here. But the coefficient of the identity remains unchanged. We're going to be using these properties in later videos in the quantum mechanics playlist. These are essential properties that the, uh, that the Hadamard gate satisfies. And we're going to be uh, using these properties to actually translate x's into z's and z's into x's. This is useful in quantum computing and in quantum information in general. You can find all the other videos in the quantum mechanics playlist if you click over here.